Today I'm going to shoot some college soccer under the light of an eclipse. Weird. <laughs> I'm going to use the Alpha 1, I'm going to use the 2 to 6, which I love for field sports because of its extreme range and the fact that it has a true 600 millimeter reach. I'll be using punch in a lot so I can shoot at 900 millimeter uh, at will, which is really, really cool without a light loss. Um, using a 50 megapixel file, I'm not sweating it because I still have a 21 megapixel file even if I punch in. Last, uh, I will be shooting high files again. Uh, I am quickly adopting this new format as sort of my wor new workflow. It makes my life much easier in post. Today, I may try something new with this sort of high file uh, journey that I'm on. I may try to not use photo mechanic at all, which hurts my heart to say, but it's just really slow. It, it doesn't resolve uh, previews very quickly but Lightroom seems to handle the high files much better. So I might try that today and see how it goes. So come on with me as we head out to the soccer pitch to shoot a game. Thanks for watching. So this is my second game shooting high files. Uh, this time I used it at a soccer game. I really want to shoot uh, some nighttime football under lights, which will happen this Friday night in Dallas, Texas with my buddy, David. Um, but, uh, this was uh, a game I really wanted to kind of stress the ISO a little bit. Um, and so I shot the 2 to 600 G lens instead of the 400 to 8 or the 600 to 4. So I was shooting at uh, f6.3 most of the time. Um, and the results are pretty interesting. There was some noise uh, because I was using a very high shutter speed and I was basically at 2000 ISO the whole game. Um, but and I want to be fair and tell you that I did use Denoise um, software. So these have been all been run through Denoise uh, from Topaz, which I really love. Their, their stuff is top, top, top notch. But anyway, I just want to go through these pictures real quick and then uh, talk about what I learned at the end of showing you the images. So here's the, this is a big crop. This is probably from 25% of the frame. Uh, this is pretty close to full frame. This is a, uh, 6.3 you know this is a 600 punched in to 900 millimeter all the way down the other end of the field so i'm in the opposite uh sort of end zone um same thing this is you know he's way down the other end you can see how clean how sharp um especially you know you can see the hair individual hair follicles and stuff and just Things like shoelaces are stopped and the ball stopped. I'm at 3,200 of a second. So, um, and it bumped off of 6.3. I usually shoot this lens only at 6.3 and sometimes my hand slips and it goes to 5.6. So, uh, lots of headings. This is probably half the frame. Eh, probably more a third. This is probably a third of the original frame. Um, 2000 ISO. It doesn't look like 2000 ISO, I don't think. Somebody mentioned in, in comments on YouTube on the last video that, you know, that the images look kind of flat and they do because they have huge dynamic range. So you can add contrast and post, no big deal. It also helps to add black to these files as well. This is from way far away. This is punched in and um, all the way across the field. Uh, nice and sharp glass. You know, you can see the pieces of uh, grass flying through the air and stuff. It's cool. There's a little, little battle here to get to the baseline. Um, but you can see how sharp it is. It's just great. And remember, this is 2000 ISO. This isn't like 200 or 400 or 500. This is 2000. Just pretty clean. He had just scored a goal, which I missed, of course. <laughs> we all miss some good ones. It happens to everybody, even if they don't admit it. A little jubilation. Never hurts. It's always good to have jube. Another heading. Uh, these guys are well off the ground. I was punched in here. So this is basically 900 millimeter um, at 6'3", 2000 ISO. When I got serious about creating my YouTube studio, I knew I needed a solution for LED lighting. Westcott's L60Bs are fantastic and are the perfect blend of power, control, and price point. The sun came out a bunch. This is all during the eclipse, which is kind of bizarre. The game started at 2, and the maximum, uh, the peak of the eclipse was 1.38 p.m. 
So right after this game started, uh, it was like a three to four hour wanting of the eclipse. Um, so the light was really bizarre. It was kind of different. And then the sun did come out a couple times. Um, but you can see how there's still tone and detail in the brightest part of his arm where it should be way overexposed, his forehead, um, the uniform right in here still has tonality in it, even though we're seeing a pretty decent exposure on this side of his face. So these high files are not, um, they're not trivial. They're serious files. I think, um, I think I'm a goner. So again, just uh, both feet off the ground, getting ready to kitch. This, this is what I'd call a pre-kick. Um, notice my shutter speed is 5,000th of a second here. Um, I could be dropping my ISO, but the sun was in and out, in and out, in and out. It's safer to stay up high, leave the ISO up high, and then be able to open up when, this, when you know, the sun goes behind the clouds. I was very fortunate to get this. This is, um, you know, penalty kick and... Uh, the Scots guy defended the goal this time, so he kept the ball from going in. And by the way, this is a massive crop. This is a huge crop. This is probably, I would say, a quarter of the frame. Um, and that's punched in, too. So it's I'm already at 21 megapixel, and then I'm a quarter of that frame. Yeah, I mean, just all these little tiny pieces of grass. I mean, it's just so beautiful backlit. And his face, expression, all that stuff, it's working. This little guy was cool, man. His name is Jorge, and he was really getting after this game. He's the smallest guy by a foot, easily, from any other competitor on his team or the other team. Again, kind of flat. I probably needed a little more contrast here, a little bit more black. Would have helped this. Um, yeah. I love how the IAF and the face recognition goes right through these soccer goal nets. It's so like magical for a guy like me that shot Canon for 19 years. It's just so awesome to like not be looking at a sharp neck and then the out of focus action that I wanted. <laughs> so it's really, sometimes I just want somebody to pinch me. I love this. This is like a jubilation after the goal. And this guy's grabbing this guy's butt as a joke. And a couple of his teammates are in on it. It's pretty funny. Again, this is probably a third of the frame. So like I've cropped two thirds of the image away. It's so important to keep that shutter speed up high, even though I'm on a monopod, I'm at 2,500 of a second, which is eh, a little low. I'd rather be at 3000, but as you can see, the sun is hiding. So, and I did drop the uh, ISO down a little bit to 1250 here. Yeah, I just love that little lens. I mean, it doesn't make eye candy like the, the 400 GM and the 600 GM, but man, is it sharp. It's, it's a legit lens. Another heading. Let's keep the ball away from the goal. Again, this is probably, well, I'm out all the way on the other side of the field. So this is like a third of the frame punched in. So I don't know what that would make it. Maybe a fifth of the frame of full frame, something like that. Not a great picture, but I just liked it. Here's Jorge again. Um, He's really getting after man. This this he's a good little scrappy player. Another heading didn't quite go quite as planned for anybody. Another heading, lots of headings. These poles drive me crazy. The least they could have done is paint them black. But hey, what are you gonna do? <laughs> uh, my ladder doesn't go that high. So, uh, but yeah, just look at how sharp this is. I mean, I'm gonna actually zoom in on this one um, just so you can see better, like. Everything is just really sharp here. And it's just such a nice, it's just so nice to be able to do this with a lens. It costs two grand. It's ridiculous. Another heading that didn't go well, um, but kind of good action still. And the last one, another heading picture. So lots of headings. Um, so at this point, what I'm going to do is go back in the studio and kind of talk to you about what I learned. Because each game I do shooting high files, I'm going to learn some things. And I want to share those things with you. And we're going to do that right now. So we were back in the studio. Basically, I wanted to explain that high files or HEIF files stands for high efficiency image file format, which is shortened to .HIF in the camera. Unlike RAW, 
a lot of the uh, options inside Sony cameras like picture profiles and the creative space, those work actually in high files, just like JPEGs, where they do not work in RAW. So there's a big advantage there of shooting HIF instead of uh, RAW. Um, another thing that's really important to remember is that if you are in a game and you're doing social media, you can take an image and you can, while you're shooting HIF files, you can move an image to your phone uh, using Image Edge or the Creative Cloud thing, either way, and it, the camera will produce a JPEG, which is really cool. So you don't lose that capability just because you're shooting this other file format, which is very, very cool. Um, the game I shot, if you couldn't tell from the pictures, I had very high winds and a lot of clouds. So the light was constantly changing all the time. And it was very difficult to figure out exactly the right exposure. And the high files are so stretchy and bendy that it didn't matter if I was even a stop or two stops off when I shot a picture. Um, it, it was no problem, which is a very, very nice thing. It was, it was a lot more like shooting raw except I'm not shooting raw, which is cool. Um, you definitely have to add contrast and black to high files. They, I would say, by and large, they all need to be toned. There's no such thing as a high file that doesn't need to be toned, which is not always the case with, it, with a, uh, a JPEG. Sometimes JPEGs come out just killer, especially out of the A1. Remember, all the images that you saw were shot at 2000 ISO. Now that's, that's not 500. That's not 640, 800, 2000 ISO, it's pretty, pretty up there. And I was shooting 6.3 aperture almost the whole time. And what I was trying to do is see, well, like, okay, it's great to have a bright sunny day shooting football where I could shoot a 200 if I wanted to, but what about 2000? Now, the next game I shoot will be in, in Texas and that game will be shot uh, under lights. Uh, a high school football game. So then I'll get a chance to, you know, push at 3,200 or wherever I have to go. I'm not sure what it'll be, where light I'm going. Last, I want to be honest and upfront. I mentioned this in the, in the prior little chunk of the video where look, you were looking at the images and photo mechanic, but I wanted to make sure I, I did mention that all the images I applied Topaz denoise to. Um, so I just want to be upfront. It really helps because like at 2000 ISO, you do have some noise that sneaks into the files and it just took care of it beautifully, I thought. Now, one other change I made, instead of using Photo Mechanic to cull with this time, I took all the soccer images in uh, to Lightroom. And it was a slightly faster experience than trying to do it with Photo Mechanic, but I just love Photo Mechanic and I want to use that. I did send uh, an email to them and ask them, hey, can you look at this? Is there any way to kind of um, optimize Photo Mechanic for looking at high files rather than JPEG and RAW? Um, and I'm waiting for them to get back to me. When, when they do, I'll let you know what they say. The last thing I want to say is that Sony probably knew that some of us were going to trip into these high files. They knew what the advantages were a long time ago on the engineering side anyway. But it's just now that I'm kind of getting into it and some of you are sharing that experience with me, which is really cool. It's kind of fun to learn together online. Um, but basically, Sony does have an Imaging Edge desktop software that you can go to their website and download. I have downloaded the Mac version of that. And there is a browser feature in that software that is very similar to Photo Mechanic, where you can look at uh, contact sheet, you can look at images one at a time, um, stuff like that. But you have to also then use a uh, serial number from a camera to, you have to plug that into the download thing in order to get the Hive converter. The reason why I bring this up is probably Sony has already figured out a way to help us browse these files quicker. And so maybe, you know, we will be able to use in our work uh, space this software, this Imaging Edge desktop, maybe this will be more effective. I've not tried it yet, and that'll be for the next video. I'll definitely kind of keep checking in with you and seeing uh, if there's some advantage I've found, or if you find one, let me know, because I definitely want to know. Um, but I really feel like um, I'm about to adopt Hyf as my sort of only format to capture with. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, please subscribe if you found this helpful.